These are the birds of Sundown Island. And this is Chester Smith, a watcher of sorts for the birds that nest here. Says Spoon Bill on his nest now. <laughs> He's still giving that other bird a dirty look. This man-made island in Matagorda Bay is managed by the National Audubon Society. And it's Chester's job to keep an eye on the 18 species of birds that nest here. I have a lot of birds that are beautiful when they're in their mating colors. So one of my favorite is Reddish Egret. Reddish Egret is on the threatened list. Look at the plumes on that great egret. Isn't that beautiful? Those two there, look at there. And they're the most beautiful bird on the island, I think. It's March, spring is here, and the nesting season is underway. We refer to these birds as colonial water birds because they nest in colonies. And they nest in colonies for protection from predators. I always like birds, but I've learned quite a lot. It's fun to come out here, see what's going on. Here's some beautiful great egret chicks. You can tell they're great egrets because they have a yellow beak and have green eyeshadow. For 20 years, Chester has worked for Audubon as an island warden. He's a great ambassador for the birds, and he really puts in the extra time and energy and does whatever it takes to get people to understand how important it is that his birds stay healthy. Today, we have a list of honeydews. <laughs> Most of you people have been coming out here on the work day for many years. It's now fall. The birds are gone, but volunteers are here. He's so motivated, you kind of gain that same passion for, for the cause that, that he's working so hard for. We've got a mile of beaches here to clean the trash off. It's fun coming out here and helping Chester out with his project. This is something he cares about very much. Chester's helpers plant some drought-tolerant shrubs. When I first started coming out to this island, the idea was to plant as many little seedlings as you could and hope that a few live. Fertilizer? OK, yeah, put a bit more in, just a little bit more. Yeah. So we tried a new strategy of taking our money and buying plants that's pretty well established, has a really nice root system, and uh, we're finding out that they do a lot better out here. It's amazing, you come out here six months from now, you won't believe it, they're huge. The birds actually will rest on top of them. They've really become friends. And they're willing to do all those things that I asked them to do to help the bird, so it makes good friendship. Come on, Jester, let's look at this pipe. It's now winter. Andrew Smith from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is out with Chester to see some sand. Tons and tons of sand are being pumped out of the Intracoastal Canal and on to Sundown Island. The higher we get this island, the better it is for the bird's nest. There's two sandbars along this area that naturally occur in the bay that tend to build into the intercoastal. What that creates is a shallower channel than what's required for safe navigation. That is stacking up like I like it. But every year we have it set up so that we can get it dredge here and basically move the material over here and use it beneficially on the island. Andrew, I think they're doing a real good job. Right. I like to see the sand piled up high because these birds that nest, they all have a, a better chance of not being destroyed in a high tide. It's going to be great for them. For the brown pelican, sundown is a sanctuary. Listed as an endangered species, a pesticide known as DDT almost wiped them out. That's a pelican nest with only two eggs. 
When he first came to Audubon at Sundown Island, there were fewer than 10 breeding pairs of brown pelicans on the island. And Chester thought that maybe he could help do something about that. Using donated fence material, Chester built these pelican platforms. And it worked. So well, we watched them, and we were very careful to ask people not get close to them. So year after year, they grew in number. Now we have approaching some years up to 2,000 nesting pairs on that island, and it's been fantastic. This is a federally endangered species that Chester has, we think, almost single-handedly helped bring back to strength on the Texas coast. There's been a major comeback in the pelican population, and I believe it's got to do a lot with my grandfather and, and his passion that he's had for birds. Had Chester not come to Audubon and come to Sundown Island when he had, I'm not sure that there would still be brown pelicans on that part of the coast to talk about. It makes me feel good. It feels like all the work that me and the volunteers have done is we've been successful. The pelicans, when they're hatched, they're gray. They gradually turn white in a few weeks. Then they gradually turn brown. Spring is here once again, and as the birds arrive at sundown for another nesting season, Audubon volunteers and Chester are back as well. I really like to be there in the springtime when the first birds come in and keep track of them. His motives are pure, and he's not doing it for popularity or anything. He just wants to help the birds. He's like a grandfather to the island. <laughs> Chester thinks about retirement, but like the birds that return to sundown, he too has a calling. My plans were to, to retire when I was 85. I've already passed that date, and now I'm trying to make 90. And his calling continues. I've been encouraged to make 100. 